you are an entrepreneur or a business owner and your business has been doing really well in the recent past. You've seen your sales going up and up every month and suddenly your sales are exceeding 800,000 kwacha which is the minimum amount required for you to move on to the next level in terms of taxes. So, what should you do now? This is what I'm going to look at in today's video. Before we get started, I would like to say a million thank yous to you, my dear subscribers, for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. It's at the bottom, it's down here. Click subscribe. Now, let's get started. Hello there, entrepreneurs, and welcome to another episode of the Ndalama Insights Business Show with Mukonki Mukonkela, where we turn your challenges into actionable insights. Well, we just learned that you've exceeded, you know, the minimum threshold required of 800,000 for you to move on to the next level of company registration. You are now required to register for corporate tax. Now, as a company that is paying turnover tax currently, you are still required to continue paying turnover tax as well as doing your monthly turnover tax returns submissions to ZRA. So we are in November right now and you've exceeded your, your sales in this month. You're still required to submit your monthly turnover tax return for November and December. And you're also required to register for income tax in this month. You will start accounting for income tax next year. If you trade in taxable supplies, you are also required to register for value added tax. And that is what I want to focus on in today's video as well as my next video. Value added tax is a huge topic that requires, you know, a lot of concentration, a little bit of focus. And so I'm going to spend quite a considerable amount of time looking at VAT. So I'll do so in, in a two series video. Let's start by looking at the definition of VAT, value added tax, VAT. Value added tax is an indirect tax that is charged on the value added on a product or a service. It is normally a tax that is transferred to the end consumer or the person that pays this tax is the end consumer and normally this person is not even registered for VAT okay businesses that are registered for VAT and trade in taxable supplies can claim back the VAT on their purchases and they can also charge or transfer the VAT or on their sales so they can charge VAT on their sales as a result transferring that VAT to the final consumer. Entities that can register for value added tax include individuals or sole traders, groups of um, persons such as associations or clubs, companies limited or partnerships as well as different other entities as long as they meet the requirements for registration for value added tax. All businesses that qualify to register for value added tax must complete an application form. It can be a manual form or the form can be uh, completed online, an e-registration. So you can complete an e-registration or you can do a manual registration for VAT. There are certain obligations that are required from you as a VAT registered taxpayer by the ZRA and some of the obligations include you displaying your tax registration certificate on a prominent place. It could be on a wall or somewhere where people can actually see your tax registration certificate. So you need to display your tax registration certificate in a prominent place that people can see. You will also be required to charge VAT on your taxable supplies and you'll be required to issue tax invoices that comply with how a tax invoice should look like as laid out 
by the rules or by ZRA. Okay. So in my next video, I'm going to give you a sample of a tax invoice or how your invoice should actually look like. You also need to you know, submit returns and pay the VAT due to ZRA by the 18th of the subsequent month. You can also do a manual return that is due on the 5th of the subsequent month. Now, let's take a look at a few definitions with regards to value added tax that will help us to understand VAT better. So we're going to look at four general definitions. And of course, there are many others that we'll be looking at uh, along as, as, we, as we get going. The first definition is taxable supplier. Who's a taxable supplier? A taxable supplier is a person, individual or a company who is registered for VAT and who supplies taxable goods or services. A taxable supply is a supply of goods or services that are liable for VAT. Taxable supplies are subject to tax at two rates. We have zero rated supplies, which are taxed at 0%, and standard rated supplies, which are taxed at 16%. Zero rated supplies are specified in, in the zero rating order published by the Minister of Finance. We also have exempt supplies. These are supplies of goods and services that are exempt from VAT. These goods and services are specified in the exempt order issued by the Minister of Finance. So you need to look at these two orders, the exempt as well as the zero rated orders issued by the Ministry of Finance because they specifically state the items which are exempt as well as those that are zero rated. So in essence, Value added tax is charged at three rates. We have the zero rated supplies, standard rated supplies, and exempt supplies. Exempt and zero rated supplies are both charged at nil, but there is a difference that you need to be aware of, which is very important. If a business trades in um, zero rated supplies, it means that they can claim back VAT on their inputs or purchases. Where a business trades in exempt supplies, they cannot register for VAT and they can also not claim back VAT on their inputs or on their purchases. That is a very important distinction between zero rated supplies and um, exempt supplies. And another important difference between the zero rating and exempt rating is that when a business is is when we are determining whether a business should register for VAT or not zero rated supplies or sales contribute towards the, the determination of whether a business qualifies for registration for VAT or not whereas exempt supplies do not contribute to the determination of whether the sales exceed 800,000 and therefore this business is required to register for VAT. So this is really important. There's a, there's a distinction or there's a difference that you need to understand. And these are the two differences that you need to understand. Okay. In summary, if a business trades in zero rated supplies, it means they can claim back their input tax and their zero rated supplies of goods and services contributes towards the determination of whether they should register for VAT or not. Let's take a look at output tax. Output tax is the VAT charged and collected by a business that is making sales. So they charge the tax on their sales. VAT that is incurred on purchases of goods or services is referred to as input tax. Okay. So a business can claim back their input tax or VAT that is charged on their purchases. As a business that is registered for VAT, you are required to compute your output tax, that is your VAT on your sales, and then deduct or claim back your input tax, that is your VAT on your purchases. The difference is either VAT payable to ZRA or VAT that you can claim back from ZRA. If input VAT exceeds output VAT, you are 
in a refund position meaning that zra is supposed to refund you the difference between your output vat and your input vat or tax now the vat refund is supposed to be paid to you within 30 days of your lodgement of that tax return however there are a few considerations that ZRA looks at before they can actually refund you that VAT. The, the claim must be for business purposes. So whatever input VAT you are claiming should be for business purposes and not personal. If a transaction or an invoice was incurred for both personal and business, you need to separate the two and only claim the business aspect. Input tax cannot be claimed after 90 days or three months so you need to ensure that you claim your input tax or vat within three months okay of incurring that expense if you are claiming input vat you need to be in position of the evidence that you really incurred this expense and it is an allowable expense so you need to show the evidence through invoices through documents such as the ce20 which is the customs and exercise form 20 um, and any other evidences such as bank statements and all of that so this allows you to claim your input vat input tax quickly okay if you import goods or services you are also required to pay vat on those imports even if you are an individual. Now, finally, in today's video, what happens if your business has got different branches? Well, normally, for VAT purposes, you're only required to register your company, even if it's got different branches. This means that your business will only have one registration for VAT and will be required to submit only one VAT return and make one payment. However, if it's convenient for you, for the branch to account for their own value-added tax and you've met the obligations required by ZRA in terms of a separate accounting system for that branch, you are allowed to submit you know, different returns for the branches that you operate. When it comes to accounting for VAT, we normally look at the accrual basis or invoice basis of accounting. And so I'm going to look at this in my next video. I'm going to look at how we account for value added tax as well as, you know, look at an example of how we compute value added tax and also log on to ZRA and look at an actual VAT return. So this is what I'm going to look at in my next video. Thank you so much for your time and for watching my video today. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already by clicking the subscribe button. It's up here. Click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.